All right, moving on. We are going to hear about updates in breast cancer screening, and I would like to welcome our next speaker, Dr. Chloe Chor, who is an assistant professor of radiology and the associate director of the Diagnostic Radiology Program. So let's welcome Dr. Chor. Hi. Welcome back again. Um, I just want to, Dr. Joseph's not here, but I want to thank her for giving me this opportunity to participate in this wonderful event. Um, so some of the information that I'm going to be presenting may be repetition from this morning, but I think repetition is good to reinforce your knowledge and awareness of breast cancer. My uh, talk will be on updates on breast cancer screening. I'm going to talk mainly about um, screening guidelines, which can be confusing because there are a number of them out there. But before I um, start, I just want to find out if anyone here knows uh, what is the lifetime risk for breast cancer for women with no known risk factors. And the answer was given to you earlier today, earlier this morning. Is it A, 1 in 8, B, 1 in 15, C, 1 in 23, or D, 1 in 30? Raise your hand if you think it's uh, A. B, C, D. All right, well, the correct answer is one in eight, which is about 12%, which means that one in eight women will be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer or die from breast cancer during their lifetime. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women worldwide, and in the United States, it's the second leading cause of cancer death in women, second to lung cancer. It's estimated that in 2018, uh, it's estimated that about 266,000 women will be um, diagnosed with breast cancer, and about 40,000 will die from breast cancer. Given these statistics, it's important to be aware of breast cancer, or to, or to raise awareness of breast, about breast cancer and cancer uh, screening. To reduce deaths related to breast cancer, it's important to, regu to get regular breast cancer screening with mammograms. And as I mentioned earlier this morning, um, breast cancer screening is done before you develop signs or symptoms of the disease. Um, regular screening mammogram may find cancers at an earlier stage when treatment is likely to work best and patients will have overall uh, better survival. And now another uh, question. Who here has had a screening mammogram in the past year? So a lot of you have, which is good, good to hear and good to see. So here I'm going to show you an example where screening mammogram benefit this, a regular, getting a regular screening mammogram uh, was benefited this woman here. On this image here, this is an image from the, this patient's mammogram from one year ago. This was normal. So she comes back again a year later, and there's been a change now. Compared to her old study from one year ago, she has a new finding. It may be hard for you to see because it's very small, but this was not there in the same spot a year ago. So she was called back because it was abnormal. She got additional mammographic views and ultrasound. An ultrasound picked up a small little mass. Biopsy was recommended. And this was a small little invasive ductal carcinoma. So because of screening, we were able to find this cancer at a very early stage before it's able to metastasize to other parts of the body. Here's an example where a patient did not get regular screening mammogram. She only came to see us because she felt a lump in her breast. The lump corresponded to this mass here on the mammogram. She also has a mass in her, lymph, uh, in her axilla, which is an abnormal lymph node. Biopsy of both um, was, showed cancer, invasive ductal carcinoma in the breast with metastatic uh, disease to the lymph node. So this is an example of if she had gotten a screening mammogram on a regular basis, maybe this could have been caught earlier. Screening mammogram does save lives, and the number of women whose lives are saved because of mammography varies by age. For every um, 10,000 women screened between the ages of 40 to 49, five lives are saved, and this doubles to 10 for women ages 50 to 59, and significantly increases to 42 out of 10,000 women screened between ages 60 to 69 years of age. The, the number, the statistics I'm, t uh, I'm giving you here is for women of average risk, for women who are of higher risk, they may benefit more from a screening mammogram than those with an average risk. 
As I mentioned, there are a number of screening guidelines um, that have been published by various uh, organizations and professional societies, um, which can, uh, each guideline has some variation in their recommendations, which can be confusing for patients as well as for, for referring clinicians, whether they should get it yearly, every two years, whether they should start at 50 or 40 or 45. So it can be confusing. So I'm going to go over the three major guidelines that are um, put out. One is by the United States Preventative Service Task Force, which is also known as USPSTF, the American Cancer Society, and the American College of Radiology, which is also goes by ACR, and the Society of Breast Imaging, which goes by SBI. The different guidelines or recommendations fall within a, a spectrum from a more conservative approach to a uh, less conservative approach. So the United States Preventive Service Task Force guideline is less conservative than that of the American College of Radiology and the Society of Breast Imaging. These different guidelines were formed because of the shift in awareness within the last five to 10 years uh, within the scientific community and larger public with regard to screening mammography. The conversation has shifted to a risk-benefit discussion, and people are looking at the trying to find out what is the true benefits of screening mammography and weighing that with the potential risk of, um, of getting a screening mammogram, um, looking for presence of a disease in um, normal, uh, otherwise normal, um, healthy women. Despite these differences in the guideline recommendations, it has been well established that screening mammography um, is the gold standard for screening and has shown to decrease breast cancer mortality. Since uh, widespread institution of screening mammography in the 1980s, the breast cancer death has decreased by about 30%. So the first of the three guidelines I'm gonna go over is the one put out by the American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging. Again, this is the most conservative of the three guidelines. So all these three guidelines, to come up with their guidelines, they looked at a number of studies and how they choose to use the, and interpret the information um, varies and um, uh, dictated how they, um, uh, how they establish their guidelines. So for the ACR and SBI, they recommend that women start screening at age 40 and to do it yearly. And this is for average risk women. Um, the reason they started at 40 is because from their, um, the data, from their analysis, analysis of the data, they found there was a significant increase um, uh, of cancer between um, the women in under 40 and women over 40. So they found that the most benefit came from starting screening at 40 and to do it yearly. Breast cancer is not a disease just for old women. Um, in one out of 10 newly diagnosed breast cancer is found in women under the age of 45. And within that age group of under 45, breast cancer is more common in African American women than white women. So their recommendation for women who are of high risk, and as you heard from um, our other speakers, uh, high risk is considered to be 20% or greater of lifetime risk for breast cancer, which includes patients who carry the BRCA1 and 2 gene, patients with strong family history of breast cancer. In those cases, they recommend you starting uh, at age 30 to do it yearly. And this is, um, or uh, 10 years earlier than the youngest family member diagnosed with breast malignancy. They don't recommend starting before age 25 because of the radiation um, risk. But between ages 25 and 30, they leave it up to the patient. And if a patient who is of high risk gets an MRI starting at age 25, they could actually delay their start of screening mammography until they're 40 years of age. Women who've had uh, mantle field radiation for treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma are also increased risk for breast cancer. And in this patient population group, they recommend starting yearly at age 25 or within eight years of stopping um, the radiation treatment. Also, they also uh, for women with biopsy-proven breast cancer or ovarian cancer, they recommend to uh, get yearly screening. And when do you stop screening? So with the American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging Guidelines, they recommend continued screening indefinitely as long as 
the patient has a life expectancy of greater than five years, and the patient's willing to undergo additional testing, such as a biopsy, and at least uh, limited treatment if they were diagnosed with breast cancer. Next, I'm gonna talk about the American Cancer Society screening guideline, which is slightly less um, conservative than the one put out by the ACR and the SBI. They recommend yearly screening for women ages to 45 to 54. Again, based on their data and outweighing that risk with the, the weighing the risk of um, potential harms associated with screening. And for women ages 40, 40, for between 40 to 44, they leave it up to the patient. If the patient feels strongly about getting it started at age 40 and doing it yearly, it's up to them. And for women greater than age 55, they recommend doing it every two years but they also leave it up to the patient. If they want to do it every year after the age of 55, they have that option. So there's a little bit more flexibility in allowing patients to decide exactly when they want to start screening if they're under age 45. And not so different from the American, Cancer so I mean, American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging Guideline, patients can continue screening indefinitely as long as the life expectancy is greater than 10 years. Next, I'm going to talk about the guideline put out by the United States Preventative Service Task Force, which is the least conservative of the um, three. They eliminated screening women in, uh, who are under 50 years of age. They recommend starting screening at age 50 to 74 and to do it every two years. Again, their, their analysis and, uh, of the data that's out there and comparing to the potential harms of screening led them to uh, these guidelines. They don't have specific guidelines for women who have high risk, um, but they say they, the, in these patient population, they may consider screening at an earlier age than 50. And uh, they found that there's not enough data currently to continue screening after the age of 75. So regardless of what um, screening guidelines you follow, it is important to get regular screening. Uh, especially for women of African-American background. A number of studies have shown that although, and you've heard this morning, that although the incidence of cancer between black and white women are similar, African-American women uh, have a 39% more likely, uh, are 39 more likely, are 39% more likely to die from breast cancer than non-Hispanic white women. And they're more likely to be diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, which is more aggressive and they are less likely to be diagnosed with stage one breast cancer, but twice as likely to die of early breast cancer. And they are also of a higher risk for the BRCA1 and two gen gene um, genetic mutations compared to Western um, European ancestry. It's important to um, also, as you heard from our uh, genetic counselor, that to get evaluated for breast cancer risks, all women, especially black women and those of Ashkenazi Jewish descent should obtain a breast cancer risk so no later than age 30. And the reason that is, is you wanna be able to identify those who are of high risk so that um, they can benefit from supplemental screening that we've talked about earlier. And these include um, getting a ultrasound as well as a breast MRI. And um, so that brings me to my last few slides. I wanna, um, test your knowledge. Um, so the first question I have is to save the most lives possible. At what age should women start getting yearly screening mammogram? Is it 40, 45, 50, or 55? Who says 40? Um, 45, 50, 55. Okay, most of you are listening, it's 40. The answer is 40. And how often should you get a screening mammogram? Once every six months, once a year, once every two years, or once in a while? This is for average risk women. Is it A, B, C, or D? Who, who says A? B? You guys are listening, this is great. That is the correct answer. And so these are just a take home point. And, so, and as some of the speakers had mentioned this morning, you know, we all have busy lives, lots of responsibilities, but it's important to take time out for yourself, think about your own health, and you know, make your appointments for these screening mammograms, just don't forget. All right, thank you so much.